More on the situation in Somalia then, and the president there says at least 100 people have died after two car bomb blasts outside the Education Ministry in Mogadishu on Saturday. Hassan Sheikh Mohammoud visited the scene of the attack, and witnesses say the car bombs struck within minutes of each other, the second as people and ambulances were arriving to help after the first, Arun Iyengo reports. President Hassan Sheikh Mohammoud taking stock of the destruction in the Somali capital. Mogadishu was just getting over the last attack in August. Who were these victims? Somali people who are recovering from the attacks five years ago in the same area. Some of them recovered from injuries, some were disabled, some were orphans who lost their loved relatives in previous attacks and others. He puts the blame on the Islamist group Al-Shabaab. He's vowed since he was elected in May to wage an all-out war on the group. In the latest attack, two car explosions sent shrapnel flying near the education ministry. Police say the first explosion hit the walls of the ministry, while the second blast occurred as ambulances and onlookers arrived to help the victims. I witnessed the first explosion, then I fled the area. As I was in shock because of the first blast, another explosion rocked the same area. There are deaths and injuries. Islamist group Al-Shabaab remains a potent force in Somalia despite multinational efforts to degrade its leadership. Its fighters were driven out of the capital in 2011 by an African Union force, but the group still controls swathes of the countryside and has capacity to wage deadly strikes on civilian and military targets. Only last week, the group claimed responsibility for an attack on a hotel in the port city of Kismayo, which killed nine people and wounded 47 others. And in August, the group launched a 30-hour gun and bomb attack on the Hyatt Hotel in Mogadishu, killing 21 people and wounding 117. The president has his work cut out. The country is suffering. In addition to violence, Somalia is in the grip of the worst drought in almost 40 years. Aruna Iyengar, BBC News.